cool. Oh, I forgot you're in Florida today. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for those of you guys that know where I'm at, Melissa McCullough's house. <laughs> Can you still hear me? I came outside. Yeah. Um, I just had to adjust my volume. Okay. So we are recording um, and I'm going to formally start. So it's a couple minutes after 10 o'clock. My name is Amanda Bruton. For those that just joined, I am the owner of Medicare Answers Now, which is an FMO based in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we specialize in Medicare and senior products. I've been doing this for about 17 years. Many of you have been on trainings with me before. Um, today, we have Sandra Gephardt, who uh, was a speaker for Ms. Medicare uh, last year. She's also coming back for the 2023 third uh, annual Ms. Medicare, which is awesome in July. So totally excited to go ahead and have you come for that. Um, Sandra specializes in social media and coaching and trying to get you guys additional visibility uh, when it comes to social media. Um, we've done a couple of these classes and they are fantastic. Um, and she definitely gives you some actionables to take a look at and to move forward with. So with that being said, I am going to um, turn this over to her in two seconds. For those of you that do not know, if you check out my website, which is medicareanswersnow.com, if you click into here, um, the main page that you get into, if you want to know more about the trainings and the classes that we do, if you click into trainings and events, click into the calendar of events, you will see all the latest and greatest um, classes that are available uh, in the industry that I know of. Um, industry conferences are posted here as well. Um, so all you have to do is just click in and then you can find the information and then register as needed. Um, you can also find out about the various conferences that I have, the next one being Medicare Margaritas, which is March 21st uh, through the 23rd in Orange Beach, Alabama. Um, and then the RSVPs to Ms. Medicare is right here. And I believe that I've only got 20 seats left in this one. All of my content is always free. The only thing that is not is um, the ethics classes that I'm teaching quarterly. But you can come in here see who's speaking at the Ms. Medicare, the travel information is here, and then register uh, as you need. But there's all sorts of information on um, my website about the different things that we've got going on. So um, next class that I personally am teaching is tomorrow at one o'clock, and that's going to be building and executing a marketing plan. Um, it's one of three classes that are my foundation fundamental classes that I encourage each agent to take because um, if you don't have a solid marketing plan, you really can't go ahead and effectively um, build your business. So heads up, um, housekeeping on this, you can come off mute, as I said, to um, ask your questions of Sandra and I. Uh, feel free to do that. You can also ask them in the Q&A. I will be watching that um, as we roll through content. So with that being said, it's all you. Did you say there's only 20 seats left for Ms. Medicare? Ms. Medicare only has 20 seats left and there's only three left for Medicare margaritas. So um, better get on we're it. damn near sold out on both of them, which is awesome. Again, they're free conferences. You just got to travel and get yourself there. Um, but the content is awesome. So I'm I'm super excited to go ahead and have both of them going. Well, and content aside, I, I bought an outfit that's going to be worth the price of admission for those uh, well, yeah. guys that follow me and <laughs> have seen that um, somebody was slandering me online and said, she dresses like a 12-year-old boy. And I was like, well, you're not wrong. Um, <laughs> so. Well, I remember the conversation <laughs> last year going, can I show up in jeans and a hoodie? And I went, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I and that's one of those. But but you but you wrapped. You went ahead and you had the blouse on and the bright red lipstick, and it was a memorable tra uh, training. So, um, God love you for doing it. it it's <laughs> that that particular event is all about women empowerment and uh, learning from other leaders, and you knocked that out of the park at the park. So uh, much appreciated. Getting out of your comfort zone. So on that, um, that's what we're going to talk about today. 
is the five by five by five. So let me know in the comments that I'm not watching, but um, Amanda is. <laughs> um, if you've heard about the five by five by five before, just let me know if you've, if you've heard this um, or if you're familiar with me. Um, and I'm gonna step back outside now. They were doing some weed eating out here. It's, I left Montana. Um, so those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Sandra Gebhardt and I am from Roundup, Montana. So pretty, pretty small town um, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere in central Montana. And when I left uh, to come to Florida to an event down here, it was snowing. It snowed about a foot yesterday and it's all sunny and warm and cozy in uh, Florida. So Florida's starting to grow on me. So if you're from Florida, um, I'm starting to uh, really enjoy my time down here. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to make it to Margaritas and Medicare, Margaritas and Medicare, which um, that looks like an absolutely amazing place where you're having your event as well. So, uh, Sam, looks like we've got quite a few that have never heard yeah. about the five by five. So, okay, let, perfect. Which is awesome. I just like to new audience here. <laughs> like to check. So, what I do? A uh, quick background on me then is uh i was in i was a captive pnc agent um and got into the digital marketing because i mean you know a guy can only cold call so many people um i really enjoy going to events like networking events things in town but it got to the point where i was like i my even my husband was like how many events do we have to go to right how many silent auctions can you buy a a, a lotion <laughs> basket from <laughs> that you're allergic to, right? So I started looking at ways that I could capitalize on the in-person networking that I was doing, the clients that I was already writing, the people that I was getting on the phone, but they were saying, no, not right now. How could I continue to follow up with them without having to literally be everywhere? Um, and that's where I got into hiring some digital marketing coaches. And I really really took into the organic social media side of things. This was back like 2015 when ads were really popping off. I did some ads and stuff too, but the organic social media side of things always worked really, really well. Um, and I have continued to build on that all of these years later. A lot of times people will ask me, you know, well, what makes you an expert? You don't sell insurance anymore. Um, well, one, I'm, I'm a marketer. <laughs> um, so that's what makes me the expert in this is this is what I do. I study this. I live this. I breathe this. I run my own business this way. Um, the reason I'm not in insurance anymore is not that I was a, a failure. Rather, um, my husband got a brain tumor about six months into us owning our agency. And we decided to sell the agency and go fight that brain tumor which led into, you know, what do I want to do once we got him healthy? He's all healthy. We're doing good. Uh, found out we were pregnant with my son. Uh, when we went to go get the brain tumor out, they told us that we weren't going to be able to have kids, but, you know, I do what I want. So um, I was I was in a position to where I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? And I wanted to be able to help agents figure out some of the tools that I had figured out that were working really well for me up until the brain tumor. So this is exactly what I've used. This is what I've used to grow not only my insurance business, but my speaking um, and digital marketing side of things. So are you guys ready? That was, that was about the world's wonkiest um, intro, but for some reason, I keep catching myself in the camera. Like I'm really, really smitten with myself today. <laughs> <laughs> I got my, my bangs are really on point. So, okay. Side note. I got the shark blow dryer. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's like the Dyson one, but like half the price. And I mean, come on. Have you guys ever seen my hair look this good? This is just blow dried. There's you, no you are color. looking pretty sharp. I will <laughs> definitely say that. So, so uh, narcissism aside, let's get into it. Okay. Uh, the very first thing I want all of you guys to write down, I want you to put it in the chat. We're going to change our mindset about social media marketing right now. We're going to change our mindset about social media. I want you guys to write down, put in the chat, Facebook is for making money. I'm going to talk specifically about Facebook throughout this training. This also works on LinkedIn. Um, Facebook Can you repeat the name of the hair blow dryer that you're using? The Shark. Thank you. Like, <laughs> I think that's their official um, commercial now. 
So okay. the shark with all saving too. Perfect. On Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Facebook is for making money. Okay. Um, a, a lot of times I'm going to talk about some stuff that you're probably thinking about in the back of your head. Well, everybody, everybody's on TikTok. I need to be on TikTok. I need to have YouTube shorts. I need to have reels. I need to have all this other stuff. Yeah, all that stuff is sexy. It's flashy. It's cool. But what we're talking about is boring. It's tried. It's true. It is the foundation to any good social media marketing plan. Okay. And it's free, y'all. It's free. So Facebook is for making money. Facebook is not just for catching up with people from high school. It's not just a place that you go when you're at a red light or you're supposed to be making cold calls or you're supposed to be paying attention right now to me, but instead you're scrolling through your Facebook, right? It is for making money. It is a marketing tool that Mark Zuckerberg has given us for free that we can use and we can manipulate to get ourselves into that omnipresence that we do if we're networking in person we can uh, create an omnipresence that makes e our networking in person even stronger. If we're not out networking in person, um, I only have like one or two clients at any given time in Montana. I've got clients all across the country. I've got people from other countries that have worked with me. So your presence can go as far as you want it to, okay? So you guys all with me? Facebook is for making money. This is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about the five by five by five. This method will put you in control of the algorithm. We hear about the algorithm all the time, right? It kills me every day I see somebody say, you know, I, I copy and paste this and it'll change your whole news feed. That's not how it works, <laughs> okay? I'm not gonna bore you guys with how the algorithm works, but essentially the more content, the more entertaining content that you put out, the more Facebook is going to put you in front of your ideal client. Um, in front of the people that you're connected with on social media. So you want to think about your profile from this moment on as a reality show. You're, you're the Kardashians now, okay? Um, <laughs> you can pick whichever one you want to be. But um, what we're doing is Facebook, it needs to be a sticky platform right? That's why the more time people spend on Facebook, the more ads they see, the more ridiculous things they buy off of Facebook, especially me, um, <laughs> where I will buy, uh, I, I just bought beer koozies for my mother-in-law that looks like it's a puppy jacket because um, she's always cold, okay? That's the kind of ads that I'm seeing because Facebook knows that I'm an impulse buyer, okay? So the longer they can keep me on their platform, the more impulse buying stuff they can show me, the more I'm going to purchase you're not alone. I just bought these. Exactly. No, I, I had to have them. They were my company things. colors. I had to have them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how Facebook makes its money. So the more entertaining content that we put out, the more we can help the platform be stickier, the more that they're going to show our stuff. It's pretty simple all in all. The way that you make it happen is right here. This is it. Screenshot it. Write it down. Take a picture. Hold on. Like this, Amanda. Take a picture. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but write it down, okay? The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect with five people every single day. The lawnmower is back. <laughs> so what that means is we're going to strategically put together who we want to interact with. So find five people, whether it's referral partners, whether it's potential um, customers, whoever it is, find five people that you can interact with every single or connect with every single day. That means send them a Facebook friend request and bring them into your sphere of influence. That's how we connected. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if you're somebody that's networking in real life, send connection requests to those guys. If you want to be, um, you know, I, I hear people say this all the time, especially in Medicare. Um, well, I want to be at more senior centers. Okay, why aren't you at more senior centers? Well, because they won't return my calls. Okay, who works at the senior center? Mary does. Are you Facebook friends with Mary? No. Okay, well, why not try to be Facebook friends with her and see if you can help her with anything in her life, answer any questions, bring her some entertainment, buy her earrings because they match her company colors, whatever it is, <laughs> connect with her, make a relationship, okay? Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to interact with five people every single day. Now, an interaction is not a heart emoji. It's not a 
drive by cute, <laughs> right? What we're doing is we're actually interacting with people. We're going to go in and if somebody posts something on Facebook, that's something important to them. Okay. Whether it's their coffee, whether it's that they're having a hard day, whether it's just a picture of a sunset, right? Like a lot of people are super into sunsets and sunrises. I'm not, but like, there's a big thing for them, right? Um, so you comment on it the same way you would as if you were in a networking situation and they were pulling the picture up on their phone and showing it to you. So we're looking to do two to three sentences of why you think this content that they put out is incredible, right? Like, thank you for sharing this. Looks like you guys are having a great time. If they're looking for book recommendations, recommend books, right? Just interact with people. These are five different people, okay? So 15 people every day when it's all done. The next one is we're gonna direct message five people. This is an area where people are like, oh, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna come off salesy. I don't want to um, turn my audience off, right? You come up with all kinds of excuses not to send five direct messages. We are starting to build a relationship here. This is where you have an answer to one of their questions. You have um, a recommendation for them. You wanna send them a happy birthday. You wanna tell them they've been doing a good job. You wanna tell them that their hair looks amazing because they got a new blow dryer. Whatever yeah. it is. Dropping in somebody's DMs is not <laughs> saying, hey, I want, do you want to buy something from me? That is yeah. not what you're going to do. You'll get yourself blocked in a heartbeat. <laughs> it's going ahead and starting a relationship with with someone. Yeah. Um, those that go ahead and I have agents drop in my, my DMs all the time for various reasons. Um, you know, some it's questions that they have about a client. Other ones, it's, you know, where did you get, where are you buying your, your dresses from as Medicare? Um, other ones I've had that they're like, oh, I love the pictures of your dogs. How old are they? I mean, and we just have conversations, the ones that go ahead. And I just had one this morning. She's like, well, you're coming up on workers comp report for something. Do you want to buy something from me? And I'm like, no, you just got yourself black. I, I no. <laughs> start yes. with the relationship first. That's what sales is. <laughs> yep. You're just starting a conversation. And these are the conversations. This is the same as you walking up to somebody at a conference at a networking event and saying, you know, hey, I like your outfit, right? So we're just going to have a conversation with people. The next part is you have to share your life, okay? Share your uh, likes, your dislikes, your beliefs, funny memes, ideas, questions, jokes, whatever it is, share it out to the world. I share a lot about my son, um, what I have upcoming on events I'm speaking at, trainings I'm doing, right? Just share what's going on in your life. People say, I don't know what to post. I say, set an alarm once a day. And when the alarm goes off, do whatever, post about whatever you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's what, there's like 40, 50 people on here. All of you guys have a post right now. You guys can literally take a picture and say, I am, I am stopping my day and I'm learning something new that I don't know to become a better agent for you, to become a better agent for our community, to be the best Medicare agent that I can be in the world to make sure that nobody in our community is getting taken advantage of, right? No, however you want to position it, but educate, you know, the fact that you're reading books, the fact that you're attending trainings, the fact that you're doing all of this stuff makes you an elite insurance agent as it is. You know, there's millions of people with an insurance license. There's 40 of them on the webinar right now, okay? If you are taking the extra steps to put education first, you guys are the elite insurance agents. You guys are like the 0.05% of agents that are sowing seed back into themselves and becoming a better agent so that you can do the right thing for your community, not just put out commercials or have a telemarketing service call people, right? You guys are the best agents out there. You're truly doing this to make a difference. So let people know, you know, that's not salesy and it's okay to be salesy because you have something to sell to people and you have something that nobody wants to talk about that you have to sell to people, right? Like most people are like, oh, should I go to the dentist today or talk about insurance? Cause they both sound about the same amount of fun, right? So not only are you, you're, when it comes to sharing your message online, not only are you guys talking about something that's pretty boring to the rest of the world, you know, those of us that don't just live and breathe insurance every day, <laughs> um, but you're also combating billion dollar marketing budgets. You know, have you guys ever seen that commercial with the old football player, um, Joe Namath? Have you guys seen that Joe Namath commercial? 
right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel like maybe you're fighting an uphill battle with <laughs> changing some messages and things mm -hmm. along those lines, right? So not only are you guys fighting all of that stuff, um, now you're holding yourself back and saying, I don't want to be too salesy. I don't want to talk too much about insurance on my page. You guys have to pick up your sword every single day and tell people insurance is not cheap. It is not easy. It is not likely going to be free. You need to have a conversation with me and make sure that you are getting the right policies that you need for your life. Okay. Posting so, about insurance doesn't have to be a sales pitch. It no. can be informational. So right now to give you examples of things that you, you can post about are things like, did you know that as of January 1, all vaccines are now covered at a zero copay? You know, a lot of people still think that they're going to have to go in and pay for the shingle shots. That's no longer the case. So post about it. It is due to the, fat, the Inflation Reduction Act, and that's a new change. Talking about things like that are okay to do, but they also show that you're paying attention to what is happening in the industry and bringing value to those that are around you that can be potential customers. Not only that, you're also talking to the caregivers of those seniors as well. So for me personally, how I do this, which most of you follow me, if you don't, by all means, friend request me, but I start going ahead in my morning. Normally it's something about business development or, or motivation. There's usually an article about something in the industry that I want you guys to be aware of. And then there's usually something obnoxious and funny and usually something about coffee. Then I go throughout the day, normally about lunchtime, I go ahead and I do a quick sweep, seeing if there's anything else or if I found something else that's come on my radar that I want you guys to know about. And then when I wind down at the end of the night, normally after six is when you'll go ahead and you'll see a couple more posts on me, but I'm not on there for hours. It's 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, and then I'm good to go. Some days I may, you know, five minutes, but it doesn't take a whole lot of time to increase that visibility. And when you're doing it, make sure that your privacy settings are set so that it's public. You've got to go ahead and have that and you've got to have it where your profile shows what you guys do. So a lot of you that are on here, I've checked your profiles. You're not saying that you're an insurance agent on there. Well, how can somebody find you or know what you do if your contact information is not updated and it doesn't have that information on it. So some things that you may wanna go ahead and take a look at when you're going and doing that. Um, so Patricia asked, do we recommend doing this on our both, both our personal and our business page? So those of you guys that have heard me in the past, there was a time about eight months ago and longer that your business page wasn't being shown as much as they are now. Facebook will make a lot of changes and there isn't a, like a press release that goes out or anything. It's just trends that we watch. Um, we be, you know, people that are, are doing this all the time. Okay. So your business page right now, as it stands in this moment is a powerful tool. So you do need to be posting from your business page, but you need to, you know, 90% of your posting needs to be from your personal page. Okay. So the five by five by five, we're doing from our personal page. That's still always going to be our number one connection making omnipresence, like we're talking about. You know, Amanda's got a huge omnipresence uh, out there where it feels like she's always on social media all the time and she's on, you know, 15 or 20 minutes a day. This stuff shouldn't take you more than 15 or 20 minutes a day. It's something that you should be able to go in, interact with people, post, let everybody kind of know what's going on. And then Facebook goes out and delivers that throughout the day. So you're just always there. That omnipresence is what you're trying to create. But your business page does need to be connected to your personal page so that when somebody gets into a buying decision, they can go click on that page, contact you, send you a direct message, you know, call you, whatever it is. Um, so, but the majority of this needs to be done from your personal page. And everybody's got the time to do it. Um, you just have to make it a daily habit. Did we have any other questions pop up, Amanda? No. Okay. Um, again, this isn't super shiny. This isn't, th this is different than content creation. So that's a message that I really want to get out this year. Content creation is a whole different ball game. When we're doing uh, 
YouTube shorts and Facebook reels and TikToks and Instagram and all of that other stuff, that is a content heavy, those are content heavy platforms. It's not something that you can just go into, right? Uh, people that are really successful on TikTok that we're seeing talk about, you know, I'm selling six figures off of TikTok or these different things. They are full-time content creators. They are putting together videos. That is their daily thing. That is their version of making phone calls and having seminars and things like that. So if you're a single writing agent or you're still actively writing policies within your business, taking on content creation is going to be a big thing. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of focus away from your day to day. This one, this is, I, I just likened this the other day to, this is like the boy in high school that was the guy you should have gone out with. That's what Facebook is. Like that really nice guy that was always nice to everybody, but then you kind of friend zoned him, right? And you wanted to go out with the bad boy. TikTok and all those other things are like the bad boys with the cigarettes rolled up in their sleeves, right? And Facebook is that guy that like carried your books around and had lunch with you every day while you complained about the bad boys to him right? That's who Facebook is. That is the strong foundation. Okay. Um, so if you guys go through and you do this every single day, you will start seeing more people reaching out to you, wanting to do business with you, more referral partners, more relationships that are being built and you never know who's watching. That's why we keep everything public because you don't know what your next big opportunity is until it pops up. Make sense. Yep. I have, I have not, I've been meaning to get into the content creation side of it, but my plate's so full at the moment that there's no shot yeah. of me doing the YouTubes and the TikToks and, and the informational content. Um, it's on my to-do list and it's been for two years, but the amount of time that it takes is insane. But this I can do because it's, like you said, it's now a habit where I, I get into a groove and I set things aside that, oh, you know what? I got to post this later. So then it goes into, or somebody else send me something and then I'll, I'll, I'll post it, but it's become part of a best practice. And the thing that you have to understand is guys, the internet is not going away. It is not going away. If anything, more and more, we're getting dependent on our phones and, and on social media so it's one of those things that get in on it now, start doing the processes and getting so that you're increasing that visibility um, because you want to stay on top of it. Um, again, it's not going away. So you yeah. want people to learn about you and more and more what we're seeing. And especially if you look at the buying trends that uh, Deft Research, many of you know that um, George Dipple and Deft Research are one of the foundational um, organizations that talk about buying habits of seniors and just entities in general. Um, and one of the things that they have seen, which most of you know, your phones are ringing off the hook left, right, backwards and forwards. They're going and you know, you've got all of these overseas companies. No one wants to reach, answer their phone. They're getting inundated with direct mail. So, and they're afraid to make any decision or afraid to make any outreach. Seniors buy based on relationship as most people do, but even more so at the time from age 50 forward, what they're looking at doing is, is that they want somebody local. They want somebody that is quote unquote safe, that is not going to go ahead and steal their livelihood or their home or their retirement they want somebody that they can go up the street to go ahead and know, and they want to know a person. They don't want a mysterious person behind an 800 number that they're never going to talk to again. So as you're doing your content, you want to keep that in mind. So one of the biggest things for me was, and especially over the last two years, is, is that, and yes, I follow what Sandra has been teaching and look at how much traction I've gotten over the last couple of years with doing that. So thank you. Is that it's one of those where you see all of my colors. You laugh at me. You cry with me. You, you watch the hurdles that I go through through work. And then there's all sorts of different sides that then allow you to see the humanity. And with sales, because it's relationship-based, that in itself makes you marketable. 
and makes you memorable. So you want to do that. And I can't stress that enough when you're looking at going and doing something like this. It's not hard, guys. You just got to do it. Yes. Um, we've we got tend to one... overthink it. Yeah. Um, Ebony's question, since contract creation is so time consuming, is it best to maybe contract out? Yeah, when you get to that stage, start with Facebook and start with doing these types of things where people learn about you and you start creating a name now with this and then eventually span out as you incorporate into your marketing plan. Yeah, content creation is a whole, that's a whole different ballgame, right? That's where we're really going in and we're creating videos with intention and we're we're using the other platforms. I personally still don't have, you know, I don't have a TikTok channel. I don't have a YouTube channel just yet. You know, there's, I'm, to, I'm six or seven years down the organic social media trail and I'm still have not maxed out my Facebook reach, my Facebook audience. And this is what I do full time, <laughs> right? So the content creation side of things, when we talk about content creation, we're talking about putting together a real content strategy that we're going to send out to the masses. Okay. When we're talking of what we're talking about right now is an organic social media strategy using LinkedIn and Facebook. Okay. So this again, should only take you about 20 minutes a day. You've got the five by five by five. You're posting that you had coffee this morning. You're posting some of your goals. You're posting about your life. The same things you would do if you were at a conference or in a networking situation. We're just putting it online to create that omnipresence. 90% of your posting needs to be from your personal page. Okay, so the 5 by 5 by 5 is from our personal page. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for us? Another side note, because we have so many um, people on here, if you're doing Zoom calls often, I highly suggest having a, your picture like Lori has or Suzanne or Kelly or Katie or Kimberly, um, and that you can do uh, through your Zoom settings. So it's really easy. Who knows how to do it right on the fly here? <laughs> I do. What I'm you're going to do is, is you click into the three dots by your name, and then it's going to go ahead and it says edit profile picture. Once you get into the profile picture, pick one that you want. Um, you can click the change profile picture, which I'll go ahead and you just saw that I did. Um, I had my headshot in there. Now I have one that is Ms. Medicare. So see how I went ahead and I changed that um, so that that way it's there, but that's how you do it. So you go to the three dots up on your, um, on your tile, go to edit profile picture, then go to change picture. Then you can go ahead and change the shot, hit save, and then now it goes ahead and it adjusts to the new one. And that was just completely a side note, but it's nice to have on there, um, especially if you're like me and you don't like to turn your cameras on or like the calls that I run, I'm like, don't turn your camera on because it distracts people because they're looking at their hair and how beautiful it looks because they're a new blow dryer. So um, somebody, oh, thank you, Maureen. I don't know why everybody's commenting on my hair. It's so random. Um, <laughs> so do you find it beneficial to pay to boost ads? So ads, Again, that's a whole different ballgame. So if you're trying to run ads and all of those other things, that's a whole different ballgame. Um, boosting, that's that's a really, really, really loaded question. Um, it depends on what your ad strategy is. I'm a big, big believer in um, that agents shouldn't be full-time marketers. <laughs> so if you have the ability to learn how to run ads and do all of that stuff, then and it not take away from your business, then, you know, by all means go and do that. But that's, that's a whole different webinar on paid ads. Um, yes, Nextdoor is an absolute great resource that you can do the same sorts of things on, Tammy. I see your question there. Um, how do you connect your personal and business pages? I'll just show you guys real quick. 
oh, let's see. Can you guys see my screen? All right. So you click on your profile. Boom. Just big city internet working. And then you go over here to edit details. And then where it says works at, you just add a workspace. I got to move all this stuff out of the way. And let's say that I want to, I'm just going to add that I work at uh, Miss Medicare. So I can click that right there. I can say that I'm the uh, CMO of Miss Medicare. Um, add your city and town, a little bit of a description. And then I currently work here and then you just click save and you want this to stay public. Now, um, on a side note on that, we don't need to know every job you've ever had in your entire life. We only need to know the job that you're working at right now. Okay. okay. So, so take, take anything, anything else, else off of here that doesn't make me want to buy insurance from you. Make sense? So one of the questions that we got at that we just had asked is, is so um, I thought that all of the, if you're talking about Medicare, that everything has to be run through CMS. And that answer is no. Um, what has to run through CMS and get CMS approval is if you are promoting, let's say, Anthem, um, you know, and Anthem's got a zero premium plan that has all of these benefits and you rattle off all of those different benefits. If you're repping, if you're posting about Anthem and those benefits or either one of those, that needs to run through CMS or be CMS approved. Keep in mind that all of the carriers have social media posts that are pre-approved that you can customize. So you definitely want to go into their marketing portals to check all of those out there's a whole host of CMS approved things that you can use. Um, I would not reinvent the wheel when trying to go ahead and promote Advantage or Part D plans and all of the different benefits that are available with all of that. And you also don't have to bore your audience to death. You don't have to over-educate your audience. So I do, you know, I do run a lot of, I, I, I have a done for you system. I don't sell Medicare. I don't know the ins and outs of the plan triple Z um, that's available only on one day of the year on leap years or whatever plans you guys have. Um, but I'm still able to talk intelligently about communication is important for your uh, agency. Um, we're here to help you. We care about the community. Um, we Here's some Google reviews that we've had in the past. Leave us a Google review today, right? Um, different types of posts that, that you can put out. I asked a couple of weeks ago um, on everybody's page, who has the best chicken wings? Where have you, where have you ever had the best chicken wings? Um, mate, that was kind of selfish for me because I was really wanting chicken wings. And I was like, maybe somebody's going to say something and share a recipe. I don't know. Um, you know, wishing people, wishing your clients a happy Valentine's Day. Did you guys all do that yesterday, right? Um, so we don't need to talk about the ins and outs of different plans. If I was posting every day about how the Facebook algorithm works, all of you guys would unfriend me and go on about your lives, okay? So we want to think about this as a reality show. We want to talk about things that are, that are interesting. We want to pique people's interest, but nobody is ever going to see one of your posts. It's very unlikely that somebody's going to see one of your posts and be like, Oh, good. You answered that really in-depth question about part whatever. And now I'm going to call you and be like, just sign me up, right? We just want to pique people's interest the same way we would if we were in a networking situation. Think elevator pitches, not two, two, three, four, five paragraphs about a specific thing. Ron's questions for you. <laughs> You're muted. It would help if I go ahead and I come off mute, guys. Sorry. So what about selling med subs only? Can you focus on that? Of course you can. So most of you sell all sorts of different things. You sell dental, you sell hospital indemnity, cancer policies, med subs, med advantage, part D, a little bit everything, right? So round robin your content. So one day post about dental plans and dental is one of the fastest growing types of insurance that is out there. Seniors want to take care of their teeth. They don't want to end up having to wear dentures, right? And they don't want to gum their food. So make something funny about that. The next day, go ahead and talk about, you know, 
one of the other options that you have outside of doing Advantage plans is called a Medicare supplement. And this allows you flexibility to go to anywhere in the country and not have to worry about network issues. And they're affordable. Um, there's all sorts of different ways that you can go and do that. But you don't, when you're doing the content, you don't want to have it where no, everybody's seen this, right? Where you've got the herbal life or the supplement people that say, hey, want to buy this? You're fat. Go buy those. You know, buy my vitamins. They're going to magically make me make you skinny. Then you have the people that'll turn around and go, well, um, they're a realtor. Do you like this house? You can go and buy this house. Well, what about this house tomorrow? And what about that house that, you know, on the, uh, on the next day? It gets old real quick. But if you're providing intermittent content that's relatable, it sticks in the back of their head. Um, it, it just makes sense to go ahead and do, um, this kind of parallels to Vanessa's question, which is, is how do you find content? Are there ways to, to schedule posts, um, on group stuff, there is ways to go ahead and schedule it. Um, typically you want to do them on your, on your own. There's software that can also do, pu do publishing for you as well. I, I know that much about it. I post mine on the flow at fly as I see it so that it's not at a random time. Um, the other thing to think about with, uh, with content is, is take organizations like your hospital organizations, share something that they've got on their stuff. Um, Growing Boulder is a Facebook page that's specific to those that are seniors. That one is basically about changing the stereotypes that, that seniors aren't old and dead in their homes in a bed waiting to die. They're active and they're doing triathlons and they're traveling and they're doing all of these things. But there's some really cool content in there and they make a point to go ahead and create memes that are of actors and celebrities about what they feel, what they think about growing old as well. Share that type of stuff. Um, News articles about, you know, what's going on with various drugs, um, you know, and the links to, you know, healthy eating. Um, one of the biggest things that I can tell you, and there's studies that over the last two years have been very big, is social isolation or senior isolation is huge in the senior population. They're lonely. Their friends that they had in their 30s, 40s, and 50s are now all dropping off and dying. So they need to find ways when their work is now opening up to where they've retired and they now have free time. Well, the people that they want to spend their free time with are either their kids have gone, gone off and have their own families. Their friends have now gone ahead and are passing and they're looking for things to do. This is why, and going back to Sandra's comment about senior people, senior uh, centers and not being able to get into them. One of the biggest ways that I promote to get into senior centers is they all have event planners. They all have event calendars. Be the solution to being able to go ahead and throw an event, give back. Um, Lori just did a senior Lori Cody just did a Valentine's Day um, event at a senior center and then just posted a whole bunch of pictures about that event on her page. Those are the types of things that I'm seeing that are good that you want to post that will get somebody's attention, not just a, hey, do you want to buy insurance stuff? Um, how about like donation posts? If you're raising money um, for various places, yeah, you can go ahead and do those kinds of posts also, but if you're doing GoFundMes, be careful. Um, and the threat posts about, you know, no one likes to, you know, this is not a life insurance policy, setting up a GoFundMe, that post just pisses me off. Um, I think it's very tacky as a, as a scare tactic, but doing different, if you're going with organizations that are near and dear to you, post that about that stuff. It matters. Yeah. And you guys keep in mind that we're we're building no like and trust with people. So we don't have to overthink what we want to share with the world. Uh, Amanda, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Um, I'm on my second cup of coffee. Perfect. <laughs> so um, 
who here can relate to saying that we're going to have a health, we're going to start our day with a healthy breakfast every day, right? So your post this morning, I, for the third day in a row, I've said, I'm going to start my day with a healthy breakfast and I'm mm -hmm. drinking cold coffee and hosting my second webinar of the day. So there we are, cold coffee gang. Let's all, let's all raise a cup to each other, right? Yeah, um, Mo most people know <laughs> I get dangerous after one cup. So me doing two, because today's going to be an extremely long day. <laughs> I have to go to LA on Friday. So um, the next 48 hours are going to be long office days. So yeah. cheers. <laughs> and and it's those little things about people that you remember, right? It's, um, you know, travel tips. So asking your audience their opinion about things. Hey, I'm going to LA in two days. What should I absolutely have to have in my suitcase, right? Mm -hmm. I got the foot hammock thing that you hang from the um, snack tray. It's a little foot hammock so you can pick your feet up. Um, Are you one of those people that takes off their shoes when they travel to in the Dude, plane? I am telling you what, like, it depends on if it's the first thing in the morning and my feet are fresh. Um, but I'm telling you, you guys are going to see a lot of posts about this foot hammock thing, right? So it, it was a complete game changer. I had two rows to myself both days. So I was like, on uh, both flights on the way to Florida here. So I was like laid out like a little kid with my feet through my hammock. It was amazing, right? So ask people their opinions you know, hey, we're going to dinner, where should we go? Um, who has the best chicken wings in town? A few a few days ago, it was National Hot Chocolate Day. So I posted, you know, hey, it's National Hot Chocolate Day, go get yourself some. I know that my clients are sitting back relaxing, enjoying a nice cup of hot cocoa, because all their marketing needs are taken care of. Mm -hmm. You see how many different posts are in there, right? So you can combine things. Um, let people know about some of your your fun things, right? Like Amanda always finds these like super random, like her Fraggle Rock shirt at Christmas, right? Like, why do I know what sweater Amanda wore? Why am I still bringing it up in February? And she's building that know, like, and trust. I like her style, right? So those are the things that I remember. You like the her. craziness Plus, that is me, that I, yeah. you know, it took me a while to go ahead and embrace the crazy and share it with everybody because I used to tour the co tow the co the the company corporate line. Now it's like, okay, you guys are going to see all these colors, and why not? I laugh at myself, so why shouldn't you laugh at me too? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> as Rebecca says, people... I love your crazy. Yes, I own it. <laughs> yes, and there are people that are the company line, right? And that's what they post, and they post very. But that's how they live their life. So you're just letting people know who your authentic you is, yeah. right? And and who who I don't do smoke and mirrors. Transparency character. to me in my messaging is key. So as I've developed and gotten more and more of thank you, it's actually um, a Medicare answers now one. Um, the more and more that I've gotten my social media visibility, um, the more that. I want to be somebody that you guys see that that emulates what I am in person, which is what you see is what you get. Most people I scare the hell out of the first time that they meet. Well, I own that too. But being able to show you all the ups and downs and being able to show you that it's not all perfect in this journey of building your business, that matters to me. It matters to me for me to be able to share what I'm seeing out in the marketplace and giving you the history lessons about why things are the way that they are. Or um, when I'm having a hard day or there's something developmentally that I'm owning my weakness so that you can know that you're not alone if you have this also. You know, um, to me, that's very important when when you're doing that and, and it's evolved. Eventually, before, I was scared to death of doing this. Um, we have a question, Sandra, please answer. Should Facebook personal page be public? Yes. As long as you don't have any safety concerns, um, as long as you're okay with the world knowing where you're at. Um, yes, everything should be public. Um, I always say that if you, if you are in a situation where you're, um, not able to put yourself out publicly, um, maybe you were in a bad relationship or something and you, and your location needs to stay private, just hit me up. Um, offline, uh, sandragebhart.com will get you to all my stuff. Um, and I'll work with you for free and show you um, some some stuff that we've used in the past to help people build a brand, um, but do it in a manner where their safety is not a concern. 
If your safety is not a concern, then yes, everything needs to be public, but everything does not need to be in real time. So if you're out with your girlfriends and you're telling everybody, you know, oh, we're having a girls night out, you don't need to say there's four women that are by themselves at this bar that have probably had two or three drinks in real life at this time, come and grab us, right? Same as if I'm at the trampoline park with Gage and it's just Gage and I, I'm not posting that we're at the trampoline park when we're at the trampoline park because nobody needs to know where we are right in that moment. If I'm posting that we're at the trampoline park, we've already left. Um, so you want to keep your safety, you know, uh, keep everything doesn't have to be posted in real time. And the other thing is when we're talking about what kind of stuff do we post, why do I want to do business with Carrie or Mary or Peggy or um, Aaron, right? What makes you the person that I want to do business with instead of just calling J.J. Watt himself off his commercial and doing business with them, right? So that's what we're trying to do is we're, that's what we're building know, like, and trust for so that people can say, Sherry is my insurance agent and I know, like, and trust her and you should do business with her. I do business with her and I'm in um, a safe relationship with her and my insurance, right? That's the point of why we're doing what we're doing, why we do any sort of marketing is to show people why they should contact us, why they should stay with us, why they shouldn't shop us every year. All of that stuff is the underlining message of what we're putting out. Um, I see uh, uh, posting prompts are a really good thing. Um, I've shared a few of them. It looks like Amanda might have a calendar that's going out too. Um, those sorts of things are, are good. You know, it's good to have some content up. Um, but the more you can get into the habit of just making this part of your day to day, not using third party platforms, if at all possible to put out the content because it pushes it down in the algorithm. Again, Facebook wants you to, the more entertaining you are, the more content you're putting out, the more consistent you're interacting with the app the more you're becoming a Facebook celebrity, you're, you're sh people are tuning in to watch your show, which therefore is resulting in people staying on the platform longer and buying earrings from advertisers so that Facebook makes their money, okay? So you, you need to be intentional with the interactions with what you're doing online. If you're just trying to set it and forget it, then you're gonna get set it and forget it sort of result. When we post on a personal page, should we check in on our business is the next question. I wouldn't do it every time, but every once in a while, yeah, especially if it's a business post. Yeah, I do. I would say about once or twice a month, I'll go ahead and I'll do a post where I'm, I've checked into the office and tagged the office and some of the other staff that works with me and everything else um, that, that ends up being um, how I do it, so. You can't break Facebook, you guys. We're still we're still way overthinking it. Okay. Sometimes you're going to post something that people disagree with. They're going to be mad for like a day, and then they're going to get over it. Um, you know, we've all had our turn where, like I said, somebody was uh, blasting me on Facebook, and these people are like, "She dresses like a twelve year old boy." Well, yeah, I do. Um, they're all over it. Everybody forgot about it. I just put my hoodie back on, so I got my twelve year old boy look. Right? You're not going to break Facebook. Um, if you're blatantly doing things outside of compliance, then yeah, you might get in trouble, but don't do that. There's no reason to be posting anything that would be blatantly outside of compliance, right? What's your take so on hashtags? Uh, again, if you have a hashtag that you want to use, um, use it consistently. Like I do, uh, marketing done right. Um, but for what we're doing it again just start in and put the content out i wouldn't worry so much about trying to trend with hashtags and things like that if you have a hashtag that you use on the day today then go ahead and put it on your post um it just kind of helps them helps them pop up if you're doing a trend um you can use them but don't don't spend a lot of time so my personal, um, the only time that I use hashtag, I use hashtags on LinkedIn. I don't use them on Facebook. When I do use them on Facebook, it's only for um, 
my conferences. So if you hashtag Ms. Medicare, uh, MS Medicare, uh, or Ms. Medicare 2022 or 2022 Ms. Medicare, those all have hashtags to them. And then, and the reason that we did that is, is that with the, the attendees of the conference, then you're able to pull up all of those pictures because there's thousands of them out there. Yeah. Um, that's really where I use hashtags. I don't use them on my day to day. It just it, for Facebook, it didn't make sense to me to go ahead and do. It's just another thing you've got to try to focus on. Yeah. So you'll know, like you'll like the hashtags will speak to you when you're ready for them. <laughs> so other questions um, that you guys have. Uh, Instagram, is it a good avenue? Again, Instagram is a content heavy platform. That's a place where they want very specific content over and over and over again. Um, connecting it to your Facebook and having it go out to your Instagram is fine. You know, I, I'll get a handful of clients in a year off of an Instagram uh, post. But right now, again, I just really want you guys to focus on this, what we're talking about right now, and then you can start adding those other things in. So we're almost at time. You want to do a quick recap of what are the takeaways that if you take anything out of this training, what are the key things that they need to go ahead and be able to do so that that way they're able to go ahead and um, move forward? Yeah, 90% of you guys are still overthinking this. Five by five by five. Connect with five people, interact with five people, direct message five people, let people know what's going on in your day to day um, and do it consistently every day for the rest of your life. Awesome. Right. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> Guys, this works. So connect to five people, interact with five people, you know, clearly go ahead and do that. Um, this was actually, I broadcast this on Facebook Live, Sandra, just so that that way you know. Um, I also did record this. So I will, once this finishes uploading, it will then go out on my Facebook page or on my Facebook, on my YouTube and on my website. So that that way it's there. So that, that way we have the content. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time, um, especially when you're traveling and for everybody that enjoyed that joined, thank you so much for attending. Um, I appreciate you hope to see you on the next training. Like I said, we're going into a deep dive on setting marketing plans and executing uh, that tomorrow at one o'clock. If you want to go ahead and register for it, you can do that at MedicareAnswersNow.com. Uh, and otherwise, I hope that you have a great rest of your day and I will talk with uh, all of you soon. So thank you and have a great one. Thanks, guys.